look, iron ore prices are above 120 US dollars. Um, Phoenix is operating very efficiently. We're looking for opportunities to grow. I remain really excited about the company. It, it's an example of success in exploration and development mining. Hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar with Fenex Resources. I'm Danica Wolverton, I'm the Principal of Investability and we have the pleasure of assisting Fenex Resources with their investor relations. Uh, delighted that you could join us today. We've got a lot of people on the call uh, to hear from Chairman John Wellborn on the recent activities for the December quarter. Thanks a lot Danica and uh, welcome uh, to Fenex shareholders and any interested people joining the webinar today. Uh, delighted to have the opportunity to talk about Phoenix's December quarter, an exceptional performance from the team in uh, what is really challenging uh, circumstances. We, we uh, experienced a period of lower iron ore prices. And uh, I think it's remarkable that uh, at Phoenix, we've been able to actually increase our operating margin uh, during that quarter. Uh, for a number of reasons um, that I'll talk about. It was the first quarter where we operated uh, as a fully integrated uh, iron ore mining uh, haulage and logistics company, uh, having now fully incorporated the Phoenix New Hall business into Phoenix. And uh, we're seeing the uh, huge advantages of that transaction uh, on a day-to-day -day, uh, synergy and logistics basis. Uh, but shareholders will be pleased to see those expected benefits also flowing through into our financial numbers. Uh, we reported a C1 cash cost um, FOB Geraldton reduced down to $78 a tonne. And uh, if you think back to the December 2021 uh, quarterly report, we actually reported C1 cash costs uh, consistent with the original feasibility of 94 Australian dollars a tonne. Uh, so it, it's a 20% reduction uh, year on year in the December quarter. And given the inflationary cost pressures that all uh, iron ore and general miners, particularly in Western Australia, are seeing, uh, it's, a mark of, it's a remarkable result and uh, very pleasing, particularly in an environment where our revenue line was under pressure from lower iron ore prices. Uh, talking about managing prices, the quarter also saw us successfully extend our very successful hedging activities. Uh, and we now have a hedge book that uh, sits at 50,000 tonnes per month uh, out to the end of the financial year, uh, up to and including June uh, 2023. Uh, and that uh, is locked in at a monthly uh, average of 100, 173 Australian dollars a tonne. Uh, happy to talk about how that hedge book works, but it's been very successful. And we saw that additional revenue uh, coming into the company during the quarter. Uh, we shipped almost 300,000 tonnes um, during the quarter uh, in five ships. Um, the, uh, we were affected by uh, the uh, port shutdown, which we used to uh, our effect with a very good maintenance and incredibly uh, efficient uh, upgrading and maintenance work uh, at our, our port-owned facilities. Um, and uh, all in all, it was a very disciplined team, uh, disciplined performance from uh, our, our teams at the mine. Uh, in our haulage business and at our port. And uh, I'll talk about the quarterly and, and activities and very happy to answer questions. But as you say, Dan, we've, we've got an opportunity for uh, perhaps people who are new to the Phoenix story or shareholders who haven't had the opportunity to, to visit uh, our operations um, to have a look at them. So if we, if we um, can play the video and, and just scan through some of the recent pictures, I'll, I'll have a talk and update people about uh, our current activities. Um, That's good. So here we are starting at the Iron Ridge mine. Um, when you see the ore body, you can see uh, it's very high grade nature in the, in the nature of that very dark strip down the center uh, of the ore body. Um, very simple mining activity, one digger, um, a, a very small number of trucks. Uh, Mac are doing a great job for us out there. You can see our crushing and screening plant here, uh, producing a, a, a very high grade lump and a very high grade fines product. Uh, we then load that into now our fully 100% owned uh, Phoenix Newhall trucks. Uh, that's a picture with all those trucks are now like this one, quads. Uh, they haul 140 tonnes, 500 kilometres to Geraldton, where you're looking at uh, the only side tipping loadout um, station in Geraldton Port, which is owned by Phoenix. Uh, and uh, our shed, uh, where we store that um, iron ore, very needs to be a very integrated process to load our boats. 
uh, because the uh, it's like a big sushi train from the mine all the way through haulage, all the way through storage and effectively into the boat uh, with limited capacity um, to um, manage. To, so we have to make sure that that's a seamless uh, and ongoing um, well-run logistics, which we saw during the quarter, uh, managing port shutdowns and uh, other logistics issues to keep our operation highly efficient. And it's that efficiency that flows through into our cost management, because every time there is, if there's any delays in terms of demurrage on shipping, delays in haulage or uh, production issues at the mine, uh, that'll throw through into our costs. There's the ore body, fantastic, 65%, one of the highest grade ore bodies in Australia. Small, but obviously a very efficient uh, mine that we're currently uh, producing 1.3 million tonnes per annum. Uh, so just a, obviously more than 100,000 tonnes a month. That's a photo from January uh, of the pit. You can see the progress we're making uh, and also the, the simplicity and the cleanliness of our operations. Um, crushing and screening plant also run by MACA. Um, very efficient. It's you know now been running for more than two years and uh, is is humming along uh, nicely. And you can see those two stockpiles lump on, on the right, finds on the left. Here's an aerial photo of the ROM pad and again that crushing and streaming plant and and the camp layout very efficiently managed. And here's some of our lovely, nice, bright blue uh, Phoenix New Hall trucks. If you're operating anywhere in the Midwest or you're in and around Geraldton, you, you might, might see these going past. Uh, very uniform fleet. It's part of the efficiency of that operation. Uh, we run very uh, clear spares uh, and maintenance regime because all the trucks are, uh, are the same. Uh, Mac and Volvo all use the same parts. Um, one tire supplier uh, and all around efficiency. Uh, and here's our Phoenix facilities at the port. Um, I mentioned it's a side tipping loadout and on the left hand side there you can see the conveyor that goes over the top and connects to uh, the Phoenix shed uh, and then allows us to uh, load ships efficiently, um, uh, both with our uh, Sino, 50% Sino offtake and 50% Atlas offtake uh, and uh, that um, is, Sorry, is the, the shed loading facilities are um, run by one of our Indigenous business, Shorts Brothers, and they're a key part of our logistics train is making sure that uh, shed is uh, fully stocked and then fully emptied as required. Um, the shed capacity is, you know, uh, 70 to 80,000 tonnes, and obviously we try and load up to 60,000 tonnes in a ship. Uh, so that gives you some idea as to how important it is. We uh, maximum capacity currently of our haulage fleet is about 4,000 tonnes a day. Uh, and so, you know, we are loading ships every um, three weeks uh, and that, that's why it's important that, that all of those teams communicate clearly together uh, and operate in a very uh, cohesive manner, which is what we've demonstrated, particularly during the December quarter. And I think then we've got some nice um, photos of the Geraldton port on a lovely, nice, calm day and one of our ships being loaded. Uh, you can see that infrastructure, the Phoenix shed is in the foreground there. Uh, and then obviously uh, is connected to the Midwest Port Authority loading facilities. Uh, and um, we obviously can take Panamax ships there, uh, as I mentioned, uh, usually loading a maximum capacity of um, just under 60,000 tonnes. Uh, servicing customers, um, not just in China, but also um, in Southeast Asia. Uh, and obviously uh, another key benefit of the quarter, separate to our C1 cash cost reduction, um, C1 cash cost doesn't include shipping, but also uh, obviously given um, uh, CFR pricing, we also had a big benefit during the December quarter of much lower shipping costs, which um, flows through into, and you'll see that flow through into our profitability when we publish the half year. Um, so thanks very much for the slideshow. Hopefully that gives uh, people an, uh, a very clear understanding of what a great business Phoenix has. We've got a very high grade ore body you can send and iron ore mine you can see behind me uh, and a very efficient logistics pathway to market being our haulage fleet and our uh, unique advantage of port facilities in Geraldton being able to load. Um, coming back to the quarterly and, and providing some information that people might like to answer questions on, we uh, I'll just run through the highlights. Uh, five shipments totaled uh, just under 300,000 tonnes of, of wet metric iron ore. Um, still very happy to see that our lump tonnes uh, continue to outperform uh, the feasibility study. So uh, just over 130,000 tonnes of lump 
uh, and 165,000 tonnes of fines. And obviously we get slightly better pricing for the lump, so that's very pleasing. Um, I, I really do congratulate all of our teams on their ability to report C1 cash costs reduced again quarter on quarter uh, down to $78 Australian a wet metric tonne, FOB Geraldton. Um, and that allowed us to increase our operating margin to 38 Australian dollars a tonne. Um, so, you know, if you then times that by 300,000, um, obviously we're making 11 or $12 million cash in the quarter. Moving through onto cash, um, our cash balance reduced from $95 million um, at the end of September to uh, just under $49 million uh, at the end of December. And uh, shareholders who follow our business uh, should have expected that. As we pointed out in the quarterly, uh, we dispersed more than $50 million during the December quarter. Um, pleasingly, most of that was a fully frank dividend payment to our shareholders, uh, which uh, um, in the feedback was obviously uh, very positive, but maintaining our five and a quarter cent uh, final fully frank dividend um, and uh, 20, more than $22 million in tax payments and a very small amount of capex. Uh, we also had our last shipment of the quarter, which actually sailed on Christmas Day, uh, demonstrating that Phoenix really is a 365-day, 24-7 business. Uh, and those funds were received uh, in the first couple of days of January um, of more than $8 million. Um, so the, the uh, cash bill you expect um, reconciles with those numbers. Uh, and obviously, um, having put the dividend payment behind us and looking forward into the current quarter, we're experiencing um, uh, significantly stronger iron ore prices than we did in the December quarter. And we're looking and focused on building that cash balance up, and putting ourselves in a position uh, to pay uh, uh, a strong dividend consistent with our policy uh, at the end of the financial year. And I'll talk a little bit about that now. Um, a lot of questions coming through on the webinar relate to the opportunity Phoenix has to potentially declare an interim dividend uh, on our half year. And I remind um, shareholders that we have a dividend policy uh, that says that we will aim to pay between 50 and 80% of after-tax profits um, as a fully franked a dividend um, subject to the availability of franking credits. Uh, and the intention has always been for that to be a final dividend. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is obviously we want to manage uh, our franking balances and make sure that we know exactly what our um, uh, franking abilities are. And, and obviously with our current tax regime, um, uh, we're looking good in that regard. But also given the volatility of our business and the growth uh, initiatives that we're looking at, which I'll talk about later, um, it's appropriate that we manage that dividend policy on our final year after tax profit number rather than our interim profit number. Um, and so that's allowed us to uh, maintain that very generous dividend policy, uh, but also manage the business efficiently. And a theme of Fenex from the mining operations at Iron Ridge, very effectively managed by um, Chris Tuckwell, uh, to our um, haulage operations under the control of, of Craig Mitchell, um, and our port operations managed by um, Adrian Third, um, uh, is discipline. Uh, and, and so Phoenix is looking to maintain that discipline approach to our dividend, and, and uh, we're um, obviously putting together our interim uh, financial report for the six months. But our real intention is to build cash uh, in the second half of the year and put ourselves in a strong position to consider and declare uh, a dividend based on the, on the full year numbers. Uh, I mentioned shipping costs. They decreased to 21.7, um, uh, so almost 22 US dollars, a significant reduction that goes directly to our bottom line on CFR price ships, which is um, great. Um, uh, our hedging is very simple and uh, we're... Uh, you know, we're very well supported by Macquarie Bank. Uh, it's really a testament to the strength of Phoenix that Macquarie provide us uh, effectively an unsecured line to lock in future prices. I mentioned that we've locked in 50,000 tonnes at uh, 173 Australian dollars a tonne. Uh, the way that works is that, that um, uh, the CFR 62% price index is averaged for any month. Uh, and if that average is uh, less than $173, um, we get the difference. And obviously, if it was more than $173, we would have to fund that difference. Um, to date in our hedging activities, uh, we've only ever received hedging um, payments month on month. Uh, but obviously, it's the right way risk in that our um, 
we, we hedge slightly less than 50% of our production uh, and higher prices um, would result in even greater profitability on that HUD unhedged component. Uh, so we're going to continue to look to lock in between six and nine months of um, up to 50% of our uh, production where we can guarantee a strong margin. Um, so you know, you, you, you'll see, you can see that comfort level we have at hedging above 170 Aussie dollars uh, per ton, uh, particularly when we're maintaining our C1 cash costs uh, below $80 a ton, a really um, great, very strong performance. And obviously that relies on the continued performance of our ore body and our mining haulage and, and port efficiency teams. Uh, and that's what we're all working on at Phoenix. Um, another activity shareholders would have noticed from the quarter is we issued some bonus shares to more than 100 employees. Uh, and we also locked in some retention and, and performance packages for some key staff. And I'm really pleased to report that we've now had continuity for the, with the core team at Phoenix. We're a very small team. We operate very efficiently. Um, I often like to describe uh, the business that you've seen in that video as, as like watching a PGA golfer on the course. It makes the sport look very easy. If you're hitting fairways, you're hitting greens, but it really is the skill set and the commitment and the motivation of a very small team. And, and I'm pleased to, to uh, um, report that they're delighted and motivated and continue to perform well for Phoenix. And we're looking forward to another strong quarter um, uh, in the current quarter. Uh, obviously, we've got our, uh, our fully integrated businesses now humming. We're looking to do six ships this quarter uh, and then finish the year very, very strongly. Um, I'll turn a little bit to, as we've discussed, uh, in terms of our growth initiative, we did um, uh, have some geological teams on the ground uh, at Iron Ridge during the quarter in December. Uh, uh, obviously, you know, the prize number one in terms of growth is to extend the life of Iron Ridge. Um, we haven't done any resource um, drilling work there for some time. We've been now, we really understand the ore body well. Uh, and we have the opportunity uh, during the course of this year to look at remodeling and re-extending that and also um, just checking the reconciliations of what has been a fantastically performing ore body in terms of grade. And obviously the mining teams are producing really strong volumes. Um, uh, based on our resources, um, as at 30 June 2002, we had uh, 8.3 million tonnes of iron ore uh, at, a, at just under 65% uh, FE, so a fantastic ore body. Um, so the mine plan uh, will have us operating for about five years from now through to the end of 2027. Um, uh, obviously, we uh, secured the iron ore rights of a very large package of ground around us, the, the Ferros project uh, owned by Scorpion. Uh, we're assessing that for iron ore potential. Um, the most obvious extensions of Iron Ridge are actually um, down dip and perhaps a long strike from existing ore body. And so the, the uh, work that was done in December did uh, generate some opportunities uh, to look for more iron ore in and around us. And, and we'll be reporting on that uh, as we look at it. Iron Ridge is an incredibly high grade ore body. It's just unfortunate that uh, it's a relatively small ore body, but we are in a prolific area of iron ore. Uh, and so there are opportunities and, and we are looking at them. Uh, the other area of growth that we've made clear is that we're interested in collaboration and potentially acquisition of other regional ore bodies. Uh, and so th that review work and those discussions are ongoing. Uh, we're very motivated to maintain the discipline in our existing business. Obviously, when you've got a, an ore body like Iron Ridge, it's uh, very difficult to replicate because it is one of the highest grade uh, iron ore bodies in the country. Uh, but we are interested in high grade products and maintaining the margin that we produce from Iron Ridge. Uh, so that, uh, as you can imagine, it means that we put a very strong lens on projects that we're reviewing. Uh, and we've been very active in that regard. We continue to be so. Uh, and our ambition is we have a great team. We've got a great logistics operation. We want to find more material and more iron ore and potentially even other commodities uh, that can access that um, logistics pathway to market and access the skills and the ability of Phoenix uh, to produce uh, cash flow, profits and dividends for shareholders. And we'll continue to work on that. And obviously, as soon as we can uh, uh, either discover more iron ore, um, demonstrate a longer mine life, 
or collaborate and acquire, um, the, you, the shareholders and the market will be the first to know. Uh, so I look forward to the strong performance of our teams in the current quarter uh, as we continue to produce fantastic quality iron ore for our customers and make a good margin, uh, and also continuing to focus on how we can build a bigger company at Phoenix. Uh, and with that, Dan, very happy to answer some questions. Perfect. Thank you, John. Uh, well, I probably shouldn't have shared the, the well, thank you to everyone, firstly, uh, who sent through the questions um, in advance. We received over 40 investor questions, which is just um, wonderful because it just shows the level of engagement and, and hopefully things like this webinar um, support, support that. Um, but you uh, have answered a lot of them. Uh, there's a few that I will um, jump straight into. I mean, the interim dividend question got asked uh, a lot, which you covered. Um, your, you know, cash position you covered, uh, the life of mine question uh, got asked quite by a, a lot of people. So you covered that as well. I guess more on the growth side of things. Uh, can you uh, potentially- I'm just on the, on the interim dividend, I understand there's a lot yes. of shareholders who are interested and, and uh, are holding Fenex because we do have a, a very generous dividend policy and we've demonstrated that we can convert strong cash flows uh, into profitability and dividend streams for, for shareholders. And we really want to continue that. Uh, you know, the, the, the point I'd make to shareholders is, is that the total quantum of our annual dividend isn't in question. We'll, we, we are um, motivated to continue to uh, implement the policy that's quite clear. Uh, and while it might be, uh, you know, pleasing to shareholders to get an interim as an early payment, uh, for the reasons I said, we think it's appropriate and a dissimilar approach to, to have all the numbers in uh, for the full year before we make that decision. And the only other thing to add, obviously, in relation to dividend is that uh, we, we do maintain a very strong balance sheet and that allows us to look at new growth opportunities. Uh, and, you know, but the consistent with the values that Phoenix have always had, I mean, this company um, raised $15 million to build and implement the business that we're currently running. Uh, so we are not, we're a low capital, highly efficient um, business and we're looking for those similar opportunities. Obviously, as I mentioned, they're hard to come by, but we'll continue to be disciplined. Um, and I'm confident that we will be able to uh, secure growth opportunities for shareholders. And obviously we'll look at how uh, and the best way of funding those um, depending on their capital requirements. And, and there's an obvious impact potentially on the dividend policy, depending on what those opportunities uh, end up being. But at this stage, uh, we're focused on running the business, continuing to deliver cash flows and uh, honour the, the generous dividend policy that shareholders are aware of. Mm -hmm. And a lot of investors did actually comment uh, when they were sending through their questions on congratulating you the man, and, and the company and the broader team on the success and the value that you've mm -hmm. delivered for shareholders to date. Um, I guess on the, the growth, is there anything else that you can say around how you're going to use that strong cash balance um, and strong balance sheet that you have? Um, well, I, I think we want to, you know, we, we, we uh, the, the, the business is um, well financed. And obviously one of the things we did in the quarter was continue to uh, fund some capital uh, investment um, we mentioned the upgrading of the port and we're also doing some really opportunistic new for old replacement of our prime movers. Um, obviously, the trailer fleet there should be good for at least 10, probably 15 years before it needs any replacement. Uh, and so the, the, the existing business itself doesn't need huge capital requirements. Um, and we don't consider even some of the, 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 the we want to continue Phoenix's ability to look at uh, establishing businesses without huge uh, capital demands, and obviously that's for the best interest of shareholders. And so, you know, the the the, uh, uh, the answer to that question is, you know, the uh, we we operate in a volatile business. Um, we've demonstrated strong cost discipline. The best way to for us to continue to be able to reward shareholders is um, manage our price risk in terms of hedging. Uh, and then reduce our costs and deliver strong cash flows and build cash and, and uh, then pay a healthy dividend. Uh, mm -hmm. The challenge is also, also doing that and funding growth. Mm -hmm. um, on Fenex Newhall, which kind of ties into what you've been speaking about, can you be a bit more specific on, uh, I guess, the benefits of that acquisition of the remaining 50%? So now you're fully 100% owned. Um, sure. Yeah, look, I, I uh, you know, I mentioned the... Um, 
ongoing cost reduction we've been able to achieve in our C1 cash costs. And that is, you know, lots of different things. And I, I, I shouldn't underrate, particularly in the December quarter, the performance of our mining team to maintain uh, product volumes and be really consistent. Uh, you know, small mines like Phoenix at low volumes, there isn't a lot of margin for error. And you know, we've got a, a, a fantastic ore body, um, but um, Chris Tuckwell and his team are doing a fantastic job at the mine. Um, but the reality is when you look at that $95 a tonne um, C1 cash costs we delivered in the December quarter of 21 and the $78 we've delivered in this quarter. The big difference between those two numbers is the uh, acquisition, uh, the strategic acquisition of 50% of Phoenix Newhall. And, you know, we, on really simplistic terms, in when we acquired that business, we said that we thought there would be a $10 a tonne direct saving for Phoenix. Now, I, you know, we haven't done the final numbers and, and we're obviously in an audit process for our half year, but I'm confident we've actually done better than that uh, through that strategic acquisition. So if you're a shareholder and you're interested as to why we uh, invested seven and a half million dollars cash and 30 million shares and a whole and, and two further series of, of similar share payments based on performance for that transaction, it's pretty simple. We produce 1.3 million tonnes per annum. If we're saving $10 a tonne, uh, and I think we're actually doing better than that on the basis of that transaction, then there's a $13 million bottom line impact from that integration. Um, so it, 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 it's absolutely a no-brainer of a deal. You can see that in the numbers. Uh, and that's just on the finances. So no, it, it's, an, it's an absolute winner in terms of our ability to you know, if you look at the other small scale iron ore miners, they've all got costs above 100, they're all marginal, and effectively it means that their stop start businesses based on the iron ore price. There is a huge strategic advantage for us for getting our costs below 80 Australian dollars. It means that we're a sustainable business if iron ore prices drop. We do that by controlling our costs, but also by our efficient hedging model. Uh, and that's all because of that um, cost impact of Phoenix Newhall. Uh, moving on from just simply looking at the, the, the numbers of the deal and why it made sense and, and the, the, the effectively very quick payback um, on, on the both the equity and the cash that we invest in buying uh, that business. There's a huge um, strategic benefit that hopefully comes for you to shareholders when you look at the video of our operation. We run a mine, um, but we control the fleet that, that then connect this very important uh, logistics train in terms of managing a relatively small storage facility at Geraldton, managing shipping times and shipping loading and integrating that back to hauling uh, the the products that we need, both in terms of the amount of lump, the amount of fines and managing that. Uh, and we're not dealing with a contractor. We don't have any uh, different um, ideology in terms of maintaining the fleet, uh, the safety of our drivers, um, the quality of our operations. Uh, it's, it's actually all driven for the benefit of shareholders. And uh, I, it's something that we're very proud of across the whole Phoenix business. And if you are in the Midwest, I hope you appreciate the cleanliness and the uh, efficiency of the operation because anyone who watches a, a Phoenix Newhall truck um, drive past can see uh, the difference with most of our competitors. Yeah, and, and you touched on um, the pricing and the hedging. Uh, we did get a couple of questions uh, from shareholders asking you to just explain that a little bit more, perhaps in layman's terms, about because uh, it's quite unique to FedEx, isn't it? Um, so, what do you do? Like, what's the benefit of it? Uh, you know, what's the downside protection, the upside provided, and and what percentage of production are you hedging? Maybe just a quick run through. Yeah. So, look, you know, we. Um... Uh, we've, we've been opportunistic, so we try and take advantage of, of strong periods of time in the market and looking at the forward curve of iron ore uh, and then lock in you know, up to 50% of our production uh, for up to nine months um, to secure a, a operating margin uh, profitability. And, and the, the logic there in the first time we hedged was effectively at a very early stage in the business. Um, to secure certainty over the operating cost component of the business, which worked out at about half the, the production. Um, 
uh, now what we're looking more for, given our balance sheet and the strength of our operation, is just to secure operating margin. So, you know, as I mentioned, with, with costs that are now comfortably below 80 Australian dollars, FOB Geraldton. Uh, so if you add on shipping costs of, of let's say, you know, 30 Aussie dollars, you're, you're around 110 Australian dollars. That's the number to compare against our current hedging price of 172. So we're, we're locking in a margin of $60 Aussie roughly on a C1 basis uh, for 50,000 tonnes a month. Um, now, if, if just to be clear to people, if, if iron ore prices average more than $173, then that hedging contract will cost us money. If they were 183, um, then there's 50,000 tonnes at $10, we'd have to write out a cheque for 500,000 dollars to our hedging partner. We've never had to do that, but it would be a wonderful position if we did, because it would mean that uh, we were experiencing those higher prices across the unhedged portion uh, of our iron ore. Um, obviously, if prices are lower than, than that, uh, then we receive a check uh, and that boosts the margin that we're getting across the whole business. Um, so hopefully that explains how that works. It's actually quite a simple model. There's no uh, hugely complex underlying derivatives. Um, it's, it's really a, a, a very simple product um, and it's effectively unsecured from a Fenex perspective uh, and we're well supported by Macquarie Bank and we'll look to continue to uh, establish that future certainty uh, where it does lock in a nice, comfortable profit margin over up to 50% of our uh, production. Okay. And I know that we were trying to keep this short to 30 minutes, but I do have three more questions. So uh, on uh, the, I guess the, there's a couple of questions that have come through on the, on the Q&A. So thank you for those. Uh, your customers, um, and I guess bringing China into the equation, um, Robert asks, how dependent is Fenex on offtake from China? Uh, is there a way to mitigate the risk if China slips into recession or goes back into lockdown or, you know, something like that? Um, is there any comments that you have on that? Look, you know, we're we're obviously a minnow in the in the uh, iron ore world compared to the majors. So, you know, the the influence that Fenex has on Chinese demand is obviously insignificant in terms of our production. It's actually a strength. I, I think the, obviously the biggest um, drive, what effectively, I think what Robert is asking about is how exposed are we to uh, Chinese demand? And the reality is that anyone who's producing seaborne iron ore is entirely exposed to Chinese demand because they set the price. Now, in our case, you know, a significant portion of our uh, iron ore actually doesn't go to China. We've got customers, uh, you know, all over Southeast Asia, and that obviously they enjoy a, a shorter shipping route. Uh, but 50% of our offtake is with Sino Steel. Um, they're a very good offtake partner. Uh, but, you know, I would encourage Robert to recognise that we, are, you know, the iron ore price market is really set by China. And we try and manage that both through our cost control uh, and our hedging activities. Um, but look, you know, and, and actually, I think, as I said, currently we're experiencing quite bullish iron ore prices. If you are a bear and you think China is going into recession, well, that's why we look to hedge out to buy ourselves time uh, and also do as much as we can to reduce our costs. Mm. And I guess a lot of people are on the on the flip side of that quite bullish China at the moment, thinking that's going to be very supportive for commodities uh, this year. So we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Um, on the share price, um, Wolfgang's actually sent through a question. Why do you believe the Fennec share price has been hovering, uh, give or take, around twenty five cents in recent times? Well, look, pleasingly, I think. Uh, following publication of what is a really very, very strong quarter from Phoenix. Uh, share price has gone up about 10%. So I think we're 27 or 27 and a half cents today. Um, I, I think, you know, the Robert's question and your comments on the iron ore price, obviously during the December quarter, uh, we saw um, all of the iron ore companies come under pressure when the commodity price comes down. Uh, but I think the one thing that's driving Fenex uh, is the thoughts on our mine life. So we're obviously very profitable at the moment, uh, but we've got you know four or five year, years, really good years left of Iron Ridge and what else is beyond that? So as I said, we're focused on looking in a disciplined way. Uh, we're very confident that we've got a very strong team and logistics pathway uh, and there are opportunities. And I think uh, the market would respond very positively if we can demonstrate that we're not only going to make money last quarter and make money this quarter, but we're going to make uh, similar profits or in fact growing profits out into the future. There's a couple of, there's, there's one other thing I've said uh, I'll add to that. 
obviously mine life extensions is one thing, which is maintaining perhaps our existing production rate of 1.3 million tonnes per annum for longer. The other opportunity that a larger resource base would provide us is, is growth in our production volume. And the real game in bulk commodities, if you're looking for ongoing and significant cost reduction, is to move the denominator. Uh, and uh, that's another huge opportunity for us that I think would uh, drive, uh, obviously, uh, a greater share price for Phoenix. And uh, we mentioned earlier the dividend, um, but equally the board and the management team are, are very interested and focused on the capital appreciation of the, of the value of our shares and therefore the company. We think we've got a wonderful opportunity to build a really exciting company in the Midwest and perhaps even broader. But uh, in, a, in a disciplined way, we're focused on what the most obvious opportunities are. And the number one thing we need to do is maintain the strength of our existing operations while we explore what is the best next step for the company. Yeah. And on building that um, company in the Midwest, uh, I guess the triple bottom line question uh, has come in. You mentioned in the quarterly about the um, nomination for the AMAC Awards. Um, can you touch on, Yeah, I mean, Obviously, iron ore companies are not synonymous with ESG generally, but what are you doing in that sense to, to contribute positively to the community? I, I think our strong ESG credentials are really in relation to community and workforce. I mentioned um, uh, our team and, uh, you know, the, um, the strength of that team and the continuity of it. But one of the key other underlying values of Phoenix and strength of the companies is, in fact, our relations with uh, a lot of our stakeholders and most obviously the Wajiri Yamaji people and the traditional owners of the Iron Ridge mine you can see behind me. This is a very sensitive area uh, and we mine an ore body that is surrounded by uh, sensitive um, cultural sites uh, and we do that um, in, in partnership with those traditional owners we've all you know that that is intrinsic to the establishment and the operation of the company and that flows through into the very high uh, levels of indigenous employment we have uh, and the uh, businesses that we're building um, with with strong indigenous components and, and that's an important part of phoenix and and then expanding that out we're obviously very interested in and very active in the community in and around the midwest we're proud sponsors of the, the Geraldton Redbacks. Uh, and um, we're looking for opportunities to, to build strong ESG credentials. Uh, from a, a carbon footprint perspective, obviously the high grade nature of our product is a, is a much more environmentally friendly way uh, of um, producing steel products and produces uh, uh, less carbon than perhaps some other uh, lower grade ore bodies. Um, but you know, look, it's probably as I've to be very clear, you know, Phoenix burns more than a million litres of diesel a month. We'd be delighted to reduce that carbon footprint, uh, and we, we will always look for opportunities where it is the, in the benefit of our shareholders to do so. Perfect, thank you, John. So, uh, lastly, uh, we've uh, thank you for everyone who's still on the call. We've got about 150 people still on the call, which is fantastic. Um, I guess lastly to leave uh, shareholders with, are there any final comments that you would sort of like to sum, summarize, sum up with? Look, iron ore prices are above 120 US dollars. Um, Phoenix is operating very efficiently. We're looking for opportunities to grow. I remain really excited about the company. It's an example of success in exploration and development mining. It's a small scale miner. Uh, we, we, uh, you know, the board is very small. We're all significant shareholders in the company. Uh, and I'd really encourage anyone out there who's got a question, if it wasn't answered, uh, there's um, my email, Danica and her team, uh, we're, we're, we're a company that operate, as I said, uh, very strongly linked to stakeholders across the business. And obviously a really key one is, is shareholders. So if you are a shareholder, you have any queries, questions, comments, or concerns, please let us know. Uh, I'm always available, very interested in talking to shareholders and very proud of the Phoenix team and what we're delivering. So thanks very much for your interest today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if there was questions that we didn't get to on the webinar, we will answer them um, personally via email. And also a recording of this webinar will be available uh, in the coming days on Phoenix's website. Thanks again. Thanks, John. Bye, Thanks, everyone. Danica. And other commodities uh, that can access that um, logistics pathway to market and access the skills and the ability of Phoenix uh, to produce uh, 
cash flow, profits and dividends for shareholders. And we'll continue to work on that. And obviously, as soon as we can uh, uh, either discover more iron ore, um, demonstrate a longer mine life or collaborate and acquire, um, the huge shareholders in the market will be the first to know. Uh, so I look forward to the strong performance of our teams in the current quarter uh, as we continue to produce fantastic quality iron ore for our customers and make a good margin, uh, and also continuing to focus on how we can build a bigger company at Phoenix. Uh, and with that, Dan, very happy to answer some questions. Perfect. Thank you, John. Uh, well, I probably shouldn't have shared the the, well, thank you to everyone, firstly, uh, who sent through the questions um, in advance. We received over 40 investor questions, which is just um, wonderful because it just shows the level of engagement and, and hopefully things like this webinar um, support, support that. Um, but you uh, have answered a lot of them. Uh, there's a few that I will um, jump straight into. I mean, the interim dividend question got asked uh, a lot, which you covered. Um, your you know, cash position you covered. Uh, the life of mine question uh, got asked quite by a, a lot of people. So you covered that as well. I guess more on the growth side of things. Uh, can you uh, potentially- I'm Just on the on the interim dividend, I understand there's a lot yes. of shareholders who are interested and, and uh, are holding Fenex because we do have a, a very generous dividend policy and we've demonstrated that we can convert strong cash flows uh, into profitability and dividend streams for, for shareholders. And we really want to continue that. Uh, you know, the, the, the point I'd make to shareholders is, is that the total quantum of our annual dividend isn't in question. We'll, we, we are um, motivated to continue to uh, implement the policy that's quite clear. Uh, and while it might be, uh, you know, pleasing to shareholders to get an interim as an early payment, uh, for the reasons I said, we think it's appropriate and a dissimilar approach to, to have all the numbers in uh, for the full year before we make that decision. And the only other thing to add, obviously, in relation to dividend is that uh, we, we do maintain a very strong balance sheet and that allows us to look at new growth opportunities. Uh, and, you know, but the consistent with the values that Phoenix have always had, I mean, this company um, raised $15 million to build and implement the business that we're currently running. Uh, so we are not, we're a low capital, highly efficient um, business and we're looking for those similar opportunities. Obviously, as I mentioned, they're hard to come by, but we'll continue to be disciplined. Um, and I'm confident that we will be able to uh, secure growth opportunities for shareholders. And obviously we'll look at how uh, and the best way of funding those um, depending on their capital requirements. And, and there's an obvious impact potentially on the dividend policy, depending on what those opportunities uh, end up being. But at this stage, uh, we're focused on running the business, continuing to deliver cash flows and uh, honour the, the generous dividend policy that shareholders are aware of. Mm -hmm. And a lot of investors did actually comment uh, when they were sending through their questions on congratulating you the man and, and the company and the broader team on the success and the value that you've delivered for shareholders to date. Um, I guess on the, the growth, is there anything else that you can say around how you're going to use that strong cash balance um, and strong balance sheet that you have? Um, well, I, I think we want to, make, you know, we, 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 uh, the, the, the business is um, well financed and obviously one of the things we did in the quarter was continue to uh, fund some capital uh, investment. Um, we mentioned the upgrading of the port and we're also doing some really opportunistic new for old replacement of our prime movers. Um, obviously the trailer fleet there should be good for at least 10, well, probably 15 years before it needs any replacement. Uh, and so the, the, the existing business itself doesn't need huge capital requirements. Um, and we don't consider even some of the, 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 the we want to continue Phoenix's ability to look at uh, establishing businesses without huge uh, capital demands and obviously that's for the best interest of shareholders and so you know the the uh, uh, the answer to that question is you know the uh, we we operate in a volatile business um, we've demonstrated strong cost discipline the best way to for us to continue to be able to reward shareholders is um, manage our price risk in terms of hedging uh, and then reduce our costs and deliver strong cash flows and build cash and, and uh, then pay a healthy dividend. Uh, mm -hmm. The challenge is also, also doing that and funding growth. Mm -hmm. um, on Phoenix Newhall, which kind of ties into what you've been speaking about, can you be a bit more specific on, uh, I guess, the benefits of that acquisition? 
of the remaining 50%. So now you're fully 100% owned. Um, sure. Yeah, look, I, I uh, you know, I mentioned the um, ongoing cost reduction we've been able to achieve in our C1 cash costs. And that is, you know, lots of different things. And, and I, I, I shouldn't underrate, particularly in the December quarter, the performance of our mining team to maintain uh, product volumes and be really consistent. Uh, you know, small mines like Phoenix at low volumes, there isn't a lot of margin for error. And you know, we've got a, a, a fantastic ore body, um, but um, Chris Tuckwell and his team are doing a fantastic job at the mine. Um, but the reality is when you look at that $95 a tonne um, C1 cash costs we delivered in the December quarter of 21 and the $78 we've delivered in this quarter. The big difference between those two numbers is the uh, acquisition, uh, the strategic acquisition of 50% of Phoenix Newhall. And, you know, re on really simplistic terms, in when we acquired that business, we said that we thought there would be a $10 a tonne direct saving for Phoenix. Now, I, you know, we haven't done the final numbers and, and we're obviously in an audit process for our half year, but I'm confident we've actually done better than that uh, through that strategic acquisition. So if you're a shareholder and you're interested as to why we uh, invested seven and a half million dollars cash and 30 million shares and a whole and, and two further series of, of similar share payments based on performance for that transaction, it's pretty simple. We produce 1.3 million tonnes per annum. If we're saving $10 a tonne, uh, and I think we're actually doing better than that on the basis of that transaction, then there's a $13 million bottom line impact from that integration. Um, so it, 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 it's absolutely a no brainer of a deal. You can see that in the numbers uh, and that's just on the finances. So no, it, it's, an, it's an absolute winner in terms of our ability to, you know, if you look at the other small scale iron ore miners, they've all got costs above a hundred, they're all marginal. And effectively, it means that their stop start businesses based on the iron ore price. There is a huge strategic advantage for us for getting our costs below 80 Australian dollars. It means that we're a sustainable business if iron ore prices drop. We do that by controlling our costs, but also by our efficient hedging model. Uh, and that's all because of that um, cost impact of Phoenix Newhall. Uh, moving on from just simply looking at the, the, the numbers of the deal and why it made sense and, and the, the, the effectively very quick payback um, on, on the both the equity and the cash that we invested in buying uh, that business. There's a huge um, strategic benefit that hopefully comes for you to shareholders when you look at the video of our operation. We run a mine, um, but we control the fleet that, that then connect this very important uh, logistics train in terms of managing a relatively small storage facility at Geraldton, managing shipping times and shipping loading and integrating that back to hauling uh, the, the products that we need, both in terms of the amount of lump, the amount of fines and managing that. Uh, and we're not dealing with a contractor. We don't have any uh, different um, ideology in terms of maintaining the fleet uh, the safety of our drivers, um, the quality of our operations. Uh, it's, it's actually all driven for the benefit of shareholders. And uh, I, it's something that we're very proud of across the whole Phoenix business. And if you are in the Midwest, I hope you appreciate the cleanliness and the uh, efficiency of the operation because anyone who watches a Phoenix Newhall truck um, drive past can see uh, the difference with most of our competitors. Yeah, and, and you touched on um, the pricing and the hedging. Uh, we did get a couple of questions uh, from shareholders asking you to just explain that a little bit more, perhaps in layman's terms, about because uh, it's quite unique to FedEx, isn't it? Um, so what do you do? Like, what's the benefit of it? You know, what's the downside protection, the upside provided, and, and what percentage of production are you hedging? Maybe just a quick run through. Yeah, so look, you know, we... Um... Uh, we've, we've been opportunistic, so we try and take advantage of, of strong periods of time in the market and looking at the forward curve of iron ore uh, and then lock in you know, up to 50% of our production uh, for up to nine months um, to secure a, a operating margin uh, profitability. And, and the, the logic there in the first time we hedged was effectively at a very early stage in the business. Um, to secure certainty over the operating cost component of the business, which worked out at about half the, the production. Um, 
uh, now what we're looking more for, given our balance sheet and the strength of our operation, is just to secure operating margin. So, you know, as I mentioned, with, with costs that are now comfortably below 80 Australian dollars, FOB Geraldton. Uh, so if you add on shipping costs of, of let's say, you know, 30 Aussie dollars, you're, you're around 110 Australian dollars. That's the number to compare against our current hedging price of 172. So we're, we're locking in a margin of $60 Aussie roughly on a C1 basis uh, for 50,000 tonnes a month. Um, now, if, if just to be clear to people, if, if iron ore prices average more than $173, then that hedging contract will cost us money. If they were 183, um, then there's 50,000 tonnes at $10, we'd have to write out a cheque for $500,000 to our hedging partner. We've never had to do that, but it would be a wonderful position if we did, because it would mean that uh, we we were experiencing those higher prices across the unhedged portion uh, of our iron ore. Um, obviously, if prices are lower than, than that, uh, then we receive a check uh, and that boosts the margin that we're getting across the whole business. Um, so hopefully that explains how that works. It's actually quite a simple model. There's no uh, hugely complex underlying derivatives. Um, it's, it's really a, a, a very simple product um, and it's effectively unsecured from a Phoenix perspective uh, and we're well supported by Macquarie Bank and we'll look to continue to uh, establish that future certainty uh, where it does lock in a nice comfortable profit margin over up to 50% of our uh, production. Okay, and I know that we were trying to keep this short to 30 minutes, but I do have three more questions. So uh, on uh, the, I guess the, there's a couple of questions that have come through on the, on the Q&A, so thank you for those. Uh, your customers, um, and I guess bringing China into the equation, um, Robert asked, how dependent is Fenex on offtake from China? Uh, is there a way to mitigate the risk if China slips into recession or goes back into lockdown or you know, something like that? Um, is there any comments that you have on that? Look, you know, we're we're obviously a minnow in the in the uh, iron ore world compared to the majors. So uh, you know, the the influence that Fenex has on Chinese demand is obviously insignificant in terms of our production. It's actually a strength. I, I think the, obviously the biggest um, drive, what effectively, I think what Robert is asking about is how exposed are we to uh, Chinese demand? And the reality is that anyone who's producing seaborne iron ore is entirely exposed to Chinese demand because they set the price. Now, in our case, you know, a significant portion of our uh, iron ore actually doesn't go to China. We've got customers, uh, you know, all over Southeast Asia, and that obviously they enjoy a, a shorter shipping route. Uh, but 50% of our offtake is with Sino Steel. Um, they're a very good offtake partner. Uh, but, you know, I would encourage Robert to recognise that we, are, you know, the iron ore price market is really set by China. And we try and manage that both through our cost control uh, and our hedging activities. Um, but look, you know, and, and actually, I think, as I said, currently we're experiencing quite bullish iron ore prices. If you are a bear and you think China is going into recession, well, that's why we look to hedge out to buy ourselves time uh, and also do as much as we can to reduce our costs. Mm. And I guess a lot of people were on the on the flip side of that quite bullish China at the moment, thinking that's going to be very supportive for commodities uh, this year. So we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Um, on the share price, um, Wolfgang's actually sent through a question. Why do you believe the Fennec share price has been hovering, uh, give or take, around 25 cents in recent times? Well, look, pleasingly, I think uh, following publication of what is a really very, very strong quarter from Fennec, uh, the share price has gone up about 10%. So I think we're 27 or 27 and a half cents today. Um, I, I think, you know, the Robert's question and your comments on the iron ore price, obviously, during the December quarter, uh, we saw... Um, all of the iron ore companies come under pressure when the commodity price comes down. Uh, but I think the one thing that's driving Fenex uh, is the thoughts on our mine life. So we're obviously very profitable at the moment, uh, but we've got you know four or five year, years, really good years left of Iron Ridge and what else is beyond that? So as I said, we're focused on looking in a disciplined way. Uh, we're very confident that we've got a very strong team and logistics pathway uh, and there are opportunities. And I think uh, the market would respond very positively if we can demonstrate that we're not only going to make money last quarter and make money this quarter, but we're going to make uh, similar profits or in fact growing profits out into the future. There's a couple of, there's, there's one other thing I've said uh, I'll add to that. 
Obviously, mine life extensions is one thing, which is maintaining perhaps our existing production rate of 1.3 million tonnes per annum for longer. The other opportunity that a larger resource base would provide us is, is growth in our production volume. And the real game in bulk commodities, if you're looking for ongoing and significant cost reduction, is to move the denominator. Uh, and uh, that's another huge opportunity for us that I think would uh, drive, uh, obviously, uh, a greater share price for Phoenix. And uh, we mentioned earlier the dividend, um, but equally the board and the management team are, are very interested and focused on the capital appreciation of the, of the value of our shares and therefore the company. We think we've got a wonderful opportunity to build a really exciting company in the Midwest and perhaps even broader. But uh, in, a, in a disciplined way, we're focused on what the most obvious opportunities are. And the number one thing we need to do is maintain the strength of our existing operations while we explore what is the best next step for the company. Yeah. And on building that um, company in the Midwest, uh, I guess the triple bottom line question uh, has come in. You mentioned in the quarterly about the um, nomination for the AMAC Awards. Um, can you touch on... Yeah, I mean, obviously, iron ore companies are not synonymous with ESG generally, but what are you doing in that sense to, to contribute positively to the community? I, I think our strong ESG credentials are really in relation to community and workforce. I mentioned um, uh, our team and, uh, you know, the... Um, the strength of that team and the continuity of it. But one of the key other underlying values of Phoenix and strength of the companies is in fact our relations with uh, a lot of our stakeholders and most obviously the Wajiri Yamaji people and the traditional owners of the Iron Ridge mine you can see behind me. This is a very sensitive area uh, and we mine an ore body that is surrounded by uh, sensitive um, cultural sites. Uh, and we do that um, in, in partnership with those traditional owners we've all you know that that is intrinsic to the establishment and the operation of the company and that flows through into the very high uh, levels of indigenous employment we have uh, and the uh, businesses that we're building um, with with strong indigenous components and, and that's an important part of phoenix and, and then expanding that out, we're obviously very interested in and very active in the community in and around the Midwest. We're proud sponsors of the, the Geraldton Redbacks uh, and um, we're looking for opportunities to, to build strong ESG credentials. Uh, from a, a carbon footprint perspective, obviously the high grade nature of our product is a, is a much more environmentally friendly way uh, of um, producing steel products and produces uh, uh, less carbon than perhaps some other uh, lower grade ore bodies. Um, but, you know, look, it's probably, as I to be very clear, you know, Phoenix burns more than a million litres of diesel a month. We'd be delighted to reduce that carbon footprint. Uh, and we, we will always look for opportunities where it is the, in the benefit of our shareholders to do so. Perfect. Thank you, John. So uh, lastly, uh, we've uh, thank you for everyone who's still on the call. We've got about 150 people still on the call, which is fantastic. Um, I guess lastly, to leave uh, shareholders with, are there any final comments that you would sort of like to sum, summarise, sum up with? Look, iron ore prices are above 120 US dollars. Um, Phoenix is operating very efficiently. We're looking for opportunities to grow. I remain really excited about the company. It's an example of success in exploration and development mining. It's a small scale miner. Uh, we, we uh, you know, the board is very small. We're all significant shareholders in the company. Uh, and I'd really encourage anyone out there who's got a question, if it wasn't answered, uh, there's um, my email, Danica and her team, uh, we're, we're, we're a company that operate, as I said, uh, very strongly linked to stakeholders across the business. And obviously a really key one is, is shareholders. So if you are a shareholder, you have any queries, questions, comments, or concerns, please let us know. Uh, I'm always available, very interested in talking to shareholders and very proud of the Phoenix team and what we're delivering. So thanks very much for your interest today.